Mr. Kratidis. Kalisperas. Oh, Isteo Kirios Latimer. Egoemi o Paul Kratidis. My name is Latimer. I've come to meet you, Mr. Kratidis. Echo ena grama apo din adersimu, Sofia. Yes, just come this way, Mr. Kratidis. We have a carriage waiting. During my long and intimate acquaintance with Sherlock Holmes, I'd never heard him referred to his relations, and hardly ever to his own early life. Because of this reticence, I sometimes found myself regarding him as an isolated phenomenon, as deficient in human sympathy as he was preeminent in intelligence. I'd come to believe that he was an orphan with no relatives living. But one day, to my very great surprise, he began to talk to me about his family. My singular gift for observation and deduction may have come from my grandmother, who was a sister of Vernet, the French artist. Your know, art in the blood is liable to take the strangest forms. For example, my brother, Mycroft. Your brother? I didn't know you had a brother. Oh, yeah. And I can assure you that he possesses a far greater faculty for observation and deduction than I do. Holmes, I know that you are a modest man. <laughs> My dear Watson, I cannot agree with those that rank modesty among the virtues. To the logician, everything should be seen exactly as it is. And to underestimate oneself is as much a departure from the truth as to exaggerate one's own ability. What I've just told you about my brother is the exact and literal truth. Well, naturally, I don't doubt your word. But if there is another man in England with such singular powers, how is it that neither the police nor the public have ever heard of him, let alone myself? Ah, he's very well known in his own circles. Where, then? The Diogenes Club. It is the oddest club in London. And my brother, one of the oddest men. I suppose you wish to meet him. Well, of course I do. Even if it's just to prove that he exists. Then you shall. This afternoon, he has come across the most singular problem which he thinks might interest me. But why does Mycroft not use his great powers for detective work? If the art of the detective began and ended in reasoning from an armchair, my brother would be the greatest criminal agent that ever lived. What is to me a means of livelihood is to him the merest hobby of a dilettante. But he has no ambition and no energy. What is his profession, then? He has an extraordinary faculty for figures. He audits the books for some of the government departments. But what are the qualifications for the Diogenes Club? Shyness and misanthropy. My brother is one of the founder members. It contains the most unsociable and unclubable men in town who speak not a word and shun even the merest glance. Now, let us enter. Yes, but not a word.
Holmes, have you... We can talk in here. Well, thank goodness. Look at those two men, Sherlock. What do you make of them? Of the billiard marker and the other? Precisely. What do you make of the other? An old soldier, I perceive. And very recently discharged. Served in India, I see. And a non-commissioned officer. Relatively, I fancy. And a widower. With a child. Children, my dear boy. Children. <laughs> Mycroft Holmes. Glad to meet you, Dr. Watson. I hear of Sherlock everywhere since you became his chronicler. Well, thank you. For anyone who wishes to study mankind, this is the spot. But surely you were taking things a little too far just now. It is not hard to say, Watson, that a man of that bearing and expression of authority and sun-baked skin as a soldier is more than a private and is not long from India. That is not long since left the service is shown by his still wearing his ammunition boots, as they call them. He has not the cavalry stride. Yet he wore his hat on one side, as is shown by the lighter skin on one side of his brow. His weight is against him being a sapper. He is in the artillery. Then, of course, his complete mourning shows that he's lost someone very dear. The fact that he's doing his own shopping looks as though it were his wife. He's been buying things for children, you see. There is a rattle, which shows that one of them is very, very young. The fact that he has a picture book under his arm shows there is another child. Ah, Mr. Melas. Come in, sir. These are my friends. This is Dr. Watson. And this is my younger brother, Sherlock. You're Mr. Sherlock Holmes? I asked Mr. Melas to step across. He lodges on the first floor above me, and I thought you'd be interested in his story. He's the reason why I asked you to call today. Mr. Melas, he came to me, well, in perplexity. But I think I shall ask Mr. Melas to tell his own very remarkable experiences in his own fashion. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. For many years, I have been the chief Greek interpreter in London. I do not think that the police believe my story. On my word, I do not. Just because they have never heard of it before, they think that such a thing cannot be. But I know that I shall never be easy in my mind until I know what has become of my poor man with a sticking plaster upon his face. Stick. Mr. Mellas, please sit down. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. I prefer to stand. What's that? I am all attention. All this happened only two days ago, on Monday night. I am Greek by extraction and earn my living as an interpreter. It often happens that I am sent for at strange hours by foreigners who get into difficulties or by travellers who arrive late and wish my services.
Mr. Malaz? Yes? I apologize for this intrusion, but I need the services of an interpreter immediately. My name is Latimer. Immediately? I wouldn't insist unless it were urgent, but a Greek friend of mine has just arrived in this country on business, and unfortunately he speaks nothing but his own tongue. I likewise so. Mr. Malaz, please. My carriage is waiting outside. How far away? A little Kensington. I'm sorry to have to cut off your view, Mr. Melas. But the fact is, I have no intention that you should see the place to which we are driving. It might possibly be inconvenient to me if you were ever able to find your way there again. This is very extraordinary conduct, Mr. Latimer. You must be aware that what you're doing is quite illegal. It is somewhat of a liberty, no doubt, but uh, we'll make it up to you. For nearly two hours we drove, without my having the least idea as to where I was. Did you not notice any change of sound under the wheels? I listen, Mr. Holmes. Sometimes we seem to be on a paved causeway, sometimes on asphalt. But there was nothing to tell me where I was. And no other sounds? A ship's siren, a church bell? I'm sorry, nothing like that. At what time did you finally reach your destination? Ten minutes to nine, exactly. This Mr. Melas, Harold. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> well done. No ill will, Mr. Melas, I trust. But um, we could not get on without you. If you deal fair with us, you'll not regret it. But if you try any tricks, God help you. What do you want of me? Only to ask a few questions of a Greek gentleman is visiting us and to let us have the answers. But um, you say no more than you are told, or <laughs> it were better you had never been born. Mr. Mellars, pray continue. Well then, this man, this evil man, showed me into a room which appeared to be very curiously furnished. But again, the only light was afforded by a single lamp half turned down.
the sled, Harold. Are his hands loose? Mm. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> You will ask the questions, Mr. Mellas, and uh, he will write the answers. Ask him, first of all, whether he is prepared to sign the papers. Είστε διαθετημένος να υπογράψετε τα έγγραφα; Είστε διαθετημένος να υπογράψετε τα έγγραφα; Never. On no conditions. Ipokamia synthiki. He writes only if I see him married in my presence by a Greek priest whom I know. <laughs> you know what awaits you then. Ξέρετε όμως τι σας περιμένει. He says, I care nothing for myself. And so it went on. Again and again I had to ask him whether he would give in and sign the document. Again and again I had the same indignant reply. But soon, a thought came to me. I took to adding on little sentences of my own to each question. Innocent ones at first, to He's test whether either of our companions knew anything of the matter. And then, as I found that they showed no sign, I played a more dangerous game. This obstinacy is doing you no good. Αυτή η επιμονή δεν θα σας βγει σε καλό. Ποιος είστε; He says, I care not. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, he had also told me he was a stranger in London. He then told me he had been here three weeks and was being forcibly starved. Starved? Did you manage to find out his name? Gratidis. He was from Athens. But that was all I could discover, unfortunately. Another five minutes and I should have wormed out the whole story under their very noses. Ask him again, Mr. Malas. But at that instant, the door opened and a woman stepped into the room. He says never again. Well, ask him again. That will do, Mr. Melas. As you perceive, we have taken you into our confidence over some very private business. He 
Here are five sovereigns, which will, I hope, be a sufficient fee. But remember, if you speak to anyone about this, one human soul mind, well, may God have mercy on your soul. As before, I was taken in the closed carriage for almost two hours. There I was abandoned, as I was later to discover, near Wandsworth Common. I do not know where I had been, nor whom I had spoken with, nor anything, saving what I have told you. But I know there is foul play going on, and I want to help that unhappy man. Before God, I do. steps have you taken so far? Well, this was in all the daily papers. Anyone having information as to the whereabouts of a Greek gentleman named Paul Kratidis, who cannot speak English, will be rewarded. A similar reward will be paid to anyone having information about a Greek lady whose first name is Sophia, but no answer as yet. What about the Greek legation? I have tried. They know nothing. The head of the Athens police, then. Oh. Sherlock has all the energy of the family. Will you take up the case by all means and let me know if you do any good? Certainly. Mr. Mellor, sir. I should be extremely careful if I were you. But of course, through these advertisements, they will know that you have betrayed them. obvious that this Greek girl has been carried off by the young Englishman, Harold Latin. Carried off from where? Athens, perhaps? No, no, no. This Harold Latin, I cannot speak a word of Greek. The girl speaks English fairly well. Inference? That she has been in England some little time and he has not been in Greece. Thank you, Miss Jackson. Then... Let's presume that the girl was visiting England and that this Harold persuaded her to fly with him. That is more probable. Then the brother. That must be the relationship. Comes over from Greece in order to intervene. They seize him, use violence to force him to sign some documents, making over the girl's fortune to them. He's probably the trustee. This 
as we have heard, he refuses to do. So far. But these men will not stop now. Whatever happens, Watson, we must find them. How can we? Well, if our conjecture is correct, and the girl's name is or was Sophia Cratides, we should have no difficulty in tracing her. That must be our main hope. The brother, of course, is a complete stranger. Come in, Sherlock. Come in, sir. You don't expect such energy from me, do you, Sherlock? Hmm? Now, how did you get here? I passed you while you were in the telegraph office. I've had an answer to my advertisement. It came within a few minutes of your leaving. And to what effect? It is written with a J pen on royal cream paper by a middle-aged man with a weak constitution. Sir. In answer to your advertisement of today's date, I beg to inform you that I know the young lady in question very well. If you should care to call upon me, I could give you some particulars as to her painful history. She is at present at the Myrtles Beckenham. Yours faithfully, J. Davenport. He writes from Lower Brixton. Do you not think we should drive there now and learn these particulars? My dear Mycroft, the brother's life is more important than the sister's story. I think we should call at Scotland Yard for Inspector Gregson and then go straight out to Beckenham. Well, we know that a man is being done to death. Every hour may be vital. Better pick up Mr. Malax on the way. Why? Because we may need a Greek interpreter. Excellent, Watson. I should say, from what we have heard, that we are dealing with a particularly dangerous gang. Mr. Milas? Yes? There's a gentleman downstairs to see you, sir. What gentleman? Well, he said he met you today at the Dargenies Club. Mr. Holmes? Thank you! Good evening. Mr. Melas. Good evening, Mrs. Stern. Would you tell Mr. Melas I need to see him urgently? But Mr. Melas is not here, sir. A gentleman just called for him and he left. Can you tell me where? Oh, I don't know, sir. All I know is he drove off with the gentleman in a carriage. Did the gentleman give a name? No, sir. He wasn't a tall, handsome, dark young man. Oh, no, sir. He was a little gentleman with glasses, thin in the face, but very pleasant in his ways. He was laughing all the time he was talking. Thank you. Scotland Yard, and hurry. It can't be done without a warrant. We are not disputing that, Inspector. Even if they are criminals, it is a private house and the law demands... The law demands that we act quickly. Can you not find a magistrate to sign this warrant for us? At this hour? At this very minute. 
Or kidnapping could become murder. I can but try. Please do. Πρέπει να υπογράψετε, κύριε Κρατήτη. Σας παρακαλώ, υπογράψτε τα. Tell him I have ceased being reasonable. If he does not sign the papers now, I will kill him. Tell him I have no more patience. Λέει ότι θα σας σκοτώσει. Είναι τρελός και το εννοεί. Σας παρακαλώ, κύριε Κρατήδη. Υπογράψτε τα. Σας παρακαλώ. Θα σας σκοτώσει, είναι τρελός. Πρέπει να υπογράψετε. Σας παρακαλώ, κύριε Κρατήδη. Υπογράψτε τα. Είναι τρελός. Πρέπει να υπογράψετε. Σας παρακαλώ, κύριε Κρατήδη. Πρέπει να υπογράψετε. Σας παρακαλώ. Σας παρακαλώ. Please, Inspector, will you not come without a warrant? I am sorry, gentlemen. I have wasted nearly an hour. The law cannot be hurried, Mr. Holmes. The life of Mr. Melas is in your hands, Inspector. Tell him. <laughs> Tell him if I kill him. I have no use anymore <laughs> for his sister. <laughs> and she will die also. But you wouldn't know. Tell him! Λέει ότι θα σκοτώσει την αδερφή σας. Είναι τρελός και θα ζητήσει ποιο θα το κάνει. Υπογράψτε. Σας παρακαλώ κύριε Κρατήρη, σώστε τουλάχιστον τη ζωή της. Here it is, gentlemen. It's signed. Now, get someone to drive us to London Bridge Station. I'm paying them not too late! A carriage heavily loaded with luggage has passed out within the last half hour. Wait for us here. The nest is empty and the birds are flown. No more, I'm afraid. His life is over. We should have been here sooner, Inspector! Must have been dead about four hours. The gas made a surface of coup de grace. <coughs> Am I not right, Dr. Watson? Beaten to death. Oh. But Mr. Mellis still lives. Quick! Let's get him out of here as fast as possible! He's spent on brandy! Relax, Mr. Mellis, you're in safe hands! Get the ropes on. Yeah. <coughs>
From a brief look at her room, the lady left in haste, but oh. without a struggle. Oh. That man Latimer must still have some power over her. One wonders with how much remorse she abandoned her brother for Harold Latimer. You still retain your low opinion of women. In this instance, I fear I may be justified. Holmes, they appear to have consulted a Bradshaw. Let's open up this page. The boat train. The murderers won't get far. I'll have men at every port in England if need be. The boat train makes one stop between London and Dover at Herne Hill in... Uh, in 23 minutes, precisely. Exactly. Stay with your chief witness, Inspector. You may need a statement from him. And he will need your help. Little brandy and ammonia at frequent intervals. Are we the last passengers from whom you have collected tickets? Indeed, sir. I always work at the engine, start there, and work my way back to the guard. Then you can help me. There are three passengers, two men and a woman, travelling together. They may not appear to be companions, but they will be in a compartment alone. The elder man wears thick lensed glasses, and the younger might be called Hansen. They will have a great deal of luggage marked for the continent. Have you seen such a party? Yes, indeed. I can help you, Mr. Holmes. I never doubted it. There are two parties who fit that description, Mr. Holmes. True. Take out the ticket, please. In compartment B4. B4. And D8. Thank you, Inspector. How do we know which two are the murderers? It couldn't be simpler. No. Don't wake him. There's danger enough for the two of us. Printer from Deptford. His elder brother drinks too much and is pained by his liver. Not our man, then. Not our man. Um. And the girl? She knows neither of them. She's a machinist from Bradford who's going on a holiday to find romance. Which means undoubtedly that the matter is out of compartment B4. Thank you, Miss Kratides. Do sit still, Mr. Latimer. Do come in, Watson. Who's 
the hell are you? Third member of the party is absent, but I'm sure he will return. if you are this man's prisoner or companion. Don't say anything. They have no right to ask you anything at all. If they were the police, they would have said so. Why the police, Mr. Latimer? Were you expecting to meet them? Look, I don't know who you are, nor do I know how you know my name. But I'm traveling with my fiance to the continent to get married. So would you please leave us alone? Otherwise, I should be obliged to call the guard. Please do. I'm sure Dr. Watson would do it for you. Ah, I see you know who I am. Then may I be permitted to ask your fiancé the question again? It's true what he said. We are going to be married. Where? In Athens. I fear not. And who is going to stop us? If not the police, then I will. Miss Cratides, do you seriously want me to believe that you are leaving England willingly? Yes. To marry the man who has just murdered your brother? That's not true. Paul. Murdered. It isn't true, is it? He's going to meet us in Greece as soon as he's well. That's what you said to me. And he will, Sophia. He will. Your brother is dead, Miss Cratides. Don't listen to him. I found his body myself in the house in Beckham. He had been murdered, tortured to death. No, it can't be. Harold, tell me what's happened. As for you, Mr. Latimer, Mr. Melas is alive as a witness to see you hang. You are men of the world, sir. On the contrary, you, you, I've never left England in my life. Haven't you? No. Then, sir, if you must choose one country, it must be Greece, no. the land of gods, olives, and um, intrigue. No. <laughs> it is my destination, Greece. Uh, do you speak Greek, sir? No. But one can always find a good interpreter. <laughs> Thank you. And Esselam. Well, goodbye, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you. Goodbye. It was an interesting conversation. Oh, oh. <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> I sometimes get my size. I'm afraid so. 
I hated Harold Latimer. I hated him, and I loved him. I would have done anything he said. I would have gone anywhere with him. You know he murdered your brother? Yes. Even then. Mr. Kerr, we were expecting you. <laughs> I believe this is your revolver, sir. Close behind me. What will become of her? After questioning, nothing. It's not a crime to have a cold heart and not a single shred of compassion. 